Well, good morning. Uh, my name is Joshua Brummel, one of the co-founders of Therapy Flow. I'm here with Attilio. And if you're diving in, we're talking about email marketing today. We're going to be talking about what you need to do for your private practice to not just generate leads, but convert more of those calls, emails, form fills, whatever else that you're getting into new clients, especially a month later, six months later, a year later, three years later. Because one of the biggest opportunity costs is generating leads in the first place. You've done all of this work, built a website, you've launched ads, you've done a lot of other things and you've gotten a lot of leads um, and that costs you a lot. But if you don't ever recapture or utilize the leads that you're already getting and you just play one-to-one, -one, hey, they come in, they either become a client in the first couple of days or they don't, and then we give up, we are losing on a massive ability to spend less money on marketing, less time on marketing, and utilize one of the best things that all other industries rely on to get a return on investment for their marketing. So stick around, whether you're solo practice or group practice, because we're gonna be going through the three major ways that you need to be using email marketing in your practice right now, and how this could apply or save you from your summer slump right now or in the future. Let's go. Yeah, uh, I think um, you know we need to talk about the step before the steps here. Uh, For sure. there's, there's step zero here and that's have a system that will let you do this, uh, have a system that will actually let you do this. And, uh, so what is this? This is collect leads, uh, store the leads and possibly even segment the leads into different buckets, either automatically or manually, and then, uh, actually send campaigns to specific segments uh, that you choose. And so what's really cool about this is there's a lot of platforms out there these days that help you do a lot of these functions, either segmented, um, so like multiple systems that you can kind of combine together into one or just one big uh, expensive system that kind of does it all. Um, and so I'll just kind of put our hat in the ring here, but the Therapy Flow CRM does actually all of this really quick, really easy, and in a HIPAA compliant way. And so you can't really go wrong. So I would start there have the system in place and start collecting your leads automatically. And once you're yeah. doing that, once you're doing that, I think the first best easiest option to do is just the quick uh, re-offer campaign. Uh, this is just a campaign that you re-offer in an attempt to reactivate your list or the people who are on your list. So the cool thing about being in business for a long time is you'll get more and more people on your list. Uh, and as your list builds, you kind of have a, a bigger asset for your practice. It's harder for the ship to sink when your list is really, really big, right? If you could tap in and send a uh, thousand, two thousand, ten thousand emails all at once, there's a high likelihood that you reactivate uh, some of your clients. And so the quick way to do this is just uh, grab your entire list or just a list of previous clients or clients who are no longer with you. Um, and just share with them some general information about maybe some open slots, share with them some information, maybe about some new uh, team members uh, or other cool things that might uh, stir up a conversation. You can even go as far as doing things like, Hey, we know you're struggling at this time and just speak to like one specific type of person. And you'd be surprised at how many people will activate or, or realize the pattern that exists for the one type of person that you're talking about and how it may apply to them, uh, even if the scenario isn't exactly the same. Yeah, I'd say probably about once a month, we get a counselor who's probably like running ads or doing something. And they're like, man, I followed up with all these people. I did all of this work. I think I'm just going to like, you know, they're dead. I'm going to stop following up. And I'm like, hold up, let's do a quick reactivation campaign. Let's just do a big blast to all of the people who come in in the last month or the last three months um, with a quick call to action. Hey, are you still interested in therapy services? Or, hey, would you like a conversation about our, our openings? Whatever it is. Um, and without fail, every single time they're like, oh, I got two new clients from that. I got five new clients from that. I got seven new clients from that, from the one message. And that's just even from like a month or two of the of the fresh leads. Um, I really recommend doing some sort of reoffer quarterly or biannually at minimum, and especially pairing it with moments where you're experiencing a downturn can be great, aka the transition from spring to summer uh, and trying to reactivate 
old clients. Um, you can pull a list from simple practice or your EHR of uh, clients who don't have active appointments, upload that into a platform like Therapy Flow and send a nice, pretty bulk email to everyone um, and get the job done. As a quick note before we go, uh, you know, I get questions all the time. How are we able to market to our clients or send emails or, you know, whatever else? If you have your privacy policies on your website set up correctly, your disclosure set up correctly, um, and you're using a HIPAA compliant platform to do your email marketing, you shouldn't have any issues uh, with doing any of these actions. Um, and then you just need unsubscribe um, related options on all email communication uh, just to maintain compliance there and not offend anyone if they don't want to be on the on the list. Um, anything to add there, Tilio? Yeah, I might just add one uh, one other quick thing. Uh, sometimes practices with larger lists or lists that are maybe particularly old uh, may have a lot of invalid emails, uh, oh, emails that'll bounce, emails that uh, you know, maybe our spam emails or, or maybe someone misspelled the, the, the email. We've all done it. Uh, we've all been there. So I think something uh, to consider there is uh, you can use a system that will automatically email validate. So like therapy flow CRM, so it'll automatically do the email val validation so that we don't get so many bounces or uh, undeliverable messages. Or uh, you can do some scrubbing on your lists. And so there's different ways you can pay for that to happen. But uh, ultimately maybe the best way is to just get them validated and, um, and have that automatically happen for you. So, uh, keeps your bounce yeah. rates low, keeps your deliverability high and keeps you out of the spam inbox. hundred percent. So we're doing some reoffer campaigns every once in a while. It's probably the fast low hanging fruit. You do it when you feel like it and need to, um, seasonal transitions. The next best, um, recommendation that I have for, doing email marketing inside of your practice right now is a 10 day nurture sequence. So when someone first calls or really emails or fills out that form with the right system, you should be able to automate and trigger a daily email that's being sent out to this person. And what's great is you can include um, content on you, your practice, sort of the what you do, how you do it and why it works. That's kind of a really good model to follow what you do, why you do it or or how you do it and then why does it work why does the therapy work why does the mdr work why does your couples counseling work what are the results you get for clients all good pieces of content to share in um, some sort of daily format with a call to action book an appointment book an intake fill out the form schedule your consult call whatever it is that you need the client to do again when set up correctly with the right platform they can opt out if they don't want to receive more information or if they book a call or they take the next step or they reply to the email, the automation can stop. But you all have those people on your list that are like, oh, the lead never replied or I never got a hold of them and I'm following up with them. And this takes some of the manual work out of it by having a 10 day. Um, sometimes there's reasons to do weekly for a couple months potentially, <clears throat> but at minimum that first 10 days can be really helpful for getting a higher volume of conversions. Yeah, share your story here, guys. Share your why. I think that's the most important segments. Um, and maybe pre-handle objections. This is a great place to pre-handle objections. Um, and think of the, object the objections that you may have for your practice. So if you're a yeah. cash practice, you may have different objections than if you're an insurance practice. If you're an insurance practice, maybe the first step is uh, why why uh, meeting your deductible soon rather than later is helpful or uh, yeah you know, other elements like that. I think another, final... oh, I was just gonna say another content piece that can be really helpful is what do your best clients that are easy to sign up know or have that everyone else doesn't have? What are their beliefs about therapy? What do they know about their insurance and their copay or cash pay? What do they know about what they want out of therapy? And if we can share that same content inside of emails or even our website, we can pre-handle or train or educate people to have the same mindset or thought process or, or anything else inside of those emails. And I, you know, I can't tell you how often it's day three, day six, day nine that someone replies or actually takes that action. Because one, they're probably not reading every single email. They're probably opening only up a couple of them. 
Uh, and then two, people are inundated more than ever before with content, with options, with other things. And this is a really easy way to stand out. Uh, if you want to say, how do I elevate the service and the connection I generate with potential clients? Email marketing is the, one of the best ways to do that because most practices, independent practices right now, still are not doing this action consistently. Huge way to stand out from your competitors in a really positive way. Yeah, I think uh, building value uh, leads us really nicely into the third and sort of final bucket here, which is just, uh, and, and it's funny, you call it the most friendly option on the newsletter. I like that. It is probably the most friendly option. It's something that people can... Um, actually kind of get into the rhythm of reading, of replying to. Um, and it's something that, you know, is pretty harmless enough, I think. Uh, yeah. Where th this strategy just revolves around choosing s one or several segments of your uh, list and sending them weekly or monthly. Just We call them newsletters, but um, maybe that's the best term for it. But honestly, you just go out there and just deliver something, deliver something of value. Uh, you can ask them for things. You can ask for shares. You can ask for all kinds of stuff. It's a great yeah. way to build your list. It's a great way to keep and grow a following. And it's also a really great way for your, for your practice's name to stay top of mind, even for clients who don't work with you anymore. Um, and right. so if you're thinking about like, how do I capture referrals like even a year after someone leaves the practice, this is how you do that. Uh, you know, there, there's the, people talk about their mental health, especially with like close friends and family. And, and um, this is just one of the easiest ways to stay top of mind. It's one of the easiest yeah. ways to just deliver something good uh, and, and honestly help people out and, and grow your practice. So I've been running a weekly newsletter for Therapy Flow called The Flow for about two years now, um, which is crazy. It has over 10,000 readers on it that it gets sent to on a weekly basis. And every single week, it makes me money, meaning every single week I get book calls or new clients from it. And it's from work that I've done previously to get people on the list that would not be possible if one... I had giant volumes of people unsubscribe every week because it was just trashy or unvaluable content. So if you're going to do this strategy, actually take the time to not just use chat GPT to like spin up a quick little sad newsletter or just make it super vague and general for like, you know, um, just general topics of like, you know, use counseling to treat seasonal depression disorder and like have you know, almost no actual value in it. That's not how you garner an audience base. The other thing is if you're trying to get people to join your newsletter, just being like, join my newsletter isn't a very productive call to action. They need to know what they're going to get out of it and why they should engage with it on a weekly basis. And so when you're crafting a call to action on your website or you're running an ad to it, it's your value proposition. What are you going to do every week? What's your promise? Hey, I'm going to deliver weekly insights on how to grow and scale your practice in simple, fashionable ways. That's my, my call to action. And people are like, yeah, great. I want that. And then I have to deliver on that promise every single week. And the same is true for your therapy practice. Um, the, the cool thing is, is just as Atilio said, is, you know, you can get other referral partners, providers in your area or in your state on this newsletter. You could run a newsletter just for them. Um, you could run it for your active clients and people will stay engaged. Um, a couple of content ideas that we should go through for your specific you know, newsletter ideas for things that might be impactful. Talk about maybe client stories, how therapy works resources or guides like ebooks, maybe even like turn your blog into something better, more, more digestible through email formats. Um, and maybe new ways to ask. So like asks, you have to sell eventually on your, on your newsletter. Yeah. So ask for things and then maybe also ask for shares, right? People can share or forward their, their emails, especially for ones that are particularly uh, on like a topic that someone was discussing with their friend the other day. It's a great way to get people sort of in the loop, check you out and, uh, and go from there. 
definitely. I think on on a content level, something like, you know, five questions to increase intimacy in in your relationship. Right. That could be a great newsletter with good, healthy, proper five questions. This is something if you have a group practice, you can actually get the involvement of clinicians in potentially to help you build out and generate some of the some content or some of the process there. Um, this is where you can take, if you do it correctly, some of the great content written for the newsletter and format it as an article or a blog on your website for the SEO benefit. That's something that we do. So there's a lot of adjacent ways and valuable ways to make this newsletter work for you. Bottom line is a newsletter pays you the longer you do it. Uh, every single week that you commit to sending out a newsletter, it becomes more valuable to you and to your for your list, essentially. Because if you send just one newsletter once, that's the least return on investment. If you send a newsletter uh, for 12 months in a row, that's awesome. But you will get more if you send it for two years in a row. So, you know, the longer you do it, the longer you stay committed with your practice and consistent with it, the bigger return on investment you'll get from your current list. Um, and you'll generate an audience, you'll generate an asset for your practice that isn't just your front-facing marketing. And that's the big takeaway that I want you to have today is doing nurturing for your practice is one of the best ways to level up and increase volume of new clients, current client connection, and reactivate old clients. Uh, you mentioned it really quick at the very beginning here, but email, email marketing, text marketing, this is where the ROI is usually made in most businesses. Um, most businesses break even or even are open to losing money on their initial transaction from their marketing, uh, you know, acquiring their new client. But then once you include email or SMS, the return on investment from your marketing starts doubling starts tripling uh, or more. And so this is where, this is sort of the great leveler. This is the playing field. This is the great leveling playing field. Uh, this is also, this is also one of the best places to kind of plug some holes in your practice. You know, I think the title for the newsletter was something about the summer slump, right? To help your, your summer slump. So what's really interesting, I, I, I typically show this inside of our program, but you can go to trends.google.com and see the trends for the searches. And what we find is that there's actually no decline in searches for therapy or therapists. There's no decline in that search or that search volume or that search intent. So people are still looking for therapists during the summer. And so what it is that we feel is actually the cancellation rates. People get busy, we'll start going out of town, a lot of last minute appointments, people feel suddenly better, even have, you know, all these other elements included. And so this is where email marketing really starts to shine because all of a sudden you can start making announcements of new open slots. You can start opening up uh, some specific segments for each therapist. So maybe every therapist has, you know, 30, 50, 100, 200 clients that they interact with uh, on a regular basis or semi-regular basis. This is where sending out a direct Reoffer reactivation to that specific segment is really helpful. Hey, so and so just had an opening. So and so has three openings this week, uh, ready to come back in. Can I get you booked? Talk to your specific segments, and that's how you don't burn out your list. <laughs> that's how you keep your list yeah. fresh. That's how you keep things uh, sort of moving, and how you can be really, really particular and granular with who you market to, how you market, and what language even you're using. It's a great way to kind of spur up some some last minute signups. It's a great way to fill some last minute slots. It's a great way to even out the 20, 30, 40% dip from summer cancellations. Yeah, I'll probably talk about this in a couple months when it comes, but at the end of summer, this is a great way to also refill your practice with all of the current clients that paused or went to every other week or other things. Send them a nice email and text message campaign and says, hey, if you want your preferred time slot back, we've got the openings, but they fill up fast as we head back into the fall. Reach out to our team to get your ideal time slot. Because everyone wants their ideal time slot and there's only so many of them. Let your list know 
that there's only so many of them. And you'll be shocked at the end of summer, like, oh, all of these people that disappeared magically return if you communicate with them, if you communicate with them. And that's the big piece is lead your practice and lead your clients and potential clients through communication. And if you don't communicate with them, you're not leading them or providing value. If you do communicate with them and you provide value, everyone, everyone is better off. Best of luck, guys. Now's the Let perfect us know time if you have to start. Any questions. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Share this with a uh, counselor who needs to hear this. Yeah, we'll see you soon. Cheers.